What is up everyone? Welcome to part two of this lovely little build. Now the title is going to have to change ever so slightly because after this video it's probably not going to be such a budget machine. I don't know, I guess that's debatable. I'll see what I do with the title. But anyway, today we are doing a CPU upgrade. Now this may come as a little bit of a shock because at the end of the last video, part one, if you haven't checked it out, definitely go and check it out because this build was a lot of fun. At the end of that video I explained that we would be installing the lovely Radeon RX 5700 and doing a complete custom liquid cooled loop for this system. Now unfortunately uh, between everything I haven't quite got the budget to pull that off yet. It is surprising how those components add up in cost. So until I can save up a little bit more and pull that off in maybe a month or so we are going to do this as kind of like a bonus part two. So at the moment we have the Ryzen 5 3600, which is a lovely CPU. This is so much power for your money. It's a real sweet spot at the moment, especially if you can pick it up cheap on Facebook Marketplace like I did. 50 quid, boxed CPU, absolutely perfect. 3600 is a lovely six core 12 thread chip. 3.6 gigahertz can play pretty much any game and handle anything you can throw at it. It is a dreamy CPU. There is absolutely no need for me to upgrade. In fact, this next CPU is going to be extreme overkill and not a very sensible upgrade for gaming. But when one of my viewers got in touch with me and offered it at such a sweet deal, I could not refuse and I knew it would be a lovely video. So thank you, Brian. If you're watching this video, I really appreciate the deal on this guy. This is the Ryzen 9 3900X. So this is, again, third gen Ryzen, but a little bit at the opposite end of the lineup. We have got the top of the line chip, the, uh, the beastly 12 core 24 thread, 3.8 gigahertz third gen Ryzen Zen 2 chip. This guy is a absolute beast and I cannot wait to put it in. Look at the difference in packaging, guys. Just look at this beastly box for the 3900X. What an absolute beast. I love it. Of course, that's all uh, occupied by the cooler, all that space in the box. <laughs> Look at that, so cool. I'm actually really excited to try this cooler because I've been really impressed with the stock cooler that came with the 3600. Um, it's quiet, it keeps the chip pretty cool. If I load up the CPU with a 100% slammed load from something like Prime 95, then I can get the CPU to go up to 95, 96 degrees in this build. Um, which is obviously a little up there, but for normal loads under gaming and stuff, it is really quiet and really quite cool, much better than the older coolers. So I'm suitably impressed with that, which is why I'm even more intrigued about the bigger cooler that's gonna come with this CPU. Because we are talking about a 65 watt TDP chip here for the Ryzen 5. So a nice, fairly efficient chip for the speed, and then the big 105 watt TDP monster 12 core monster. So the sensible choice for a build like this is most definitely the Ryzen 5 3600. This just makes a huge amount of sense. These are still about double, maybe even triple the price in some cases online, on eBay. It all depends on what kind of deals you can get. A viewer of mine gave me a fantastic deal on this, but I would definitely not go out of my way to purchase one of these, especially for a gaming machine, because the benefit that we're going to get in games is not significant at all. But this is all for fun, and it allows me to dump a little bit more heat into the custom loop. So when we do get the custom loop, there isn't a huge amount I can really leverage from the 3600 because it doesn't require water cooling. Uh, it does fine with air cooling, it does fine with a stock cooler, so with a decent air cooler it would be, it would be lovely, it would be chilly all day long. But this guy, 105 watts, it is a monster, so we can really crank this up, get it slammed, and then it'll dump a load of heat out into the loop. So along with our video card, it means that we're gonna have to make a really nice cooling system, and it will really test that loop for us. So that's nice, we'll get a lot more heat from this guy. But yeah, in terms of your, your gaming versus your electricity bill, and your heat output, and your wallet, uh, this guy is the far more sensible CPU. But of course, these are both third gen, so not currently available anyway. This is all based on used components. These were released quarter three, I believe, of 2019. Um, an absolutely lovely lineup of CPUs. And of course, there are CPUs in between these two in the lineup. So um, yeah, this is from one extreme to another. So here's a nice shot of the screen for you guys. Hopefully you'll be able to see everything fairly clearly. We're not doing any fancy screen recording or anything like that. We are just here to get some scores for this CPU before we swap it out. So just a quick reminder of all the specs before we go forward. CPU is the Ryzen 5 3600, 65 watt TDP, 3.6 gigahertz. Everything is stock in terms of the BIOS. I've loaded optimized defaults 
and all I've really changed is the XMP profile. So everything is stock about this system. Memory is our 16 gigs of 3000 megahertz DDR4, so two eight gigabyte sticks. And then finally for the GPU, we've got our lovely little GeForce GTX 1660 Ti, which will of course be swapped out in the next video. So this is kind of the last hurrah for this card in this build. Uh, this has been rock solid as well, lovely, but we will be swapping it. So that'll be good fun in the future. That is all of the specs of the system. So now we'll go ahead and get some results. I think the first thing we'll start with is Cinebench because this is probably one benchmark that will really show us a fair difference between the two CPUs. We're talking double the core count and it is really a workhorse, that bigger chip, not for gaming, but for obviously workstation applications, applications that can really leverage all of those multiple cores. If you have that sort of use case scenario, those big heavy workloads, that's where you'd be choosing the higher core count CPU. Definitely not for just a gaming rig, unless you have that disposable income to burn and it makes no difference really, then you can just buy the buy the quickest thing. But um, let's get this measurement first then uh, for this little 3600. There she blows. Now you guys will not be able to hear the fan noise through the mic. Basically with this system, when it ramps up, we just get a little extra purr from the CPU fan and that is it. It is actually really difficult with the default settings on this motherboard to get the case fans to ramp up to assist the CPU. I've kind of noticed in this case that there's barely any airflow, but it doesn't seem to, to push those fans at all. It's aiming for silence. And again, this only really applies to synthetic stuff. When it's just a normal gaming load, it purrs away completely silently. It's just one of those PCs that is just so smooth and so quiet feeling, you know, it's just buttery all the way through. So it does feel weird to kind of rip its brain out and replace it for something else, something that's gonna be a little bit more hungry. Definitely push our little power supply, maybe not at the moment, but when we add the other video card, which is of course BIOS modded, and we're gonna be overclocking as well, and we're gonna have like the liquid cooling components, it's definitely gonna push this little PSU a little bit more, that's a consideration. This CPU is nearly taking up twice the amount of power, the uh, the new one. I thought I'd show you guys how the PC is looking after being together for a few months. This has not been touched since that video, so still just with the temporary cable management and stuff, we're gonna do a nice clean job of this in part three when we get everything swapped. Fair bit of dust in here. Um, we've got a completely open top, really. We've got that mesh, but I mean, the dust can just land on here and go straight in. And it's quite a dusty environment. There's a lot of footfall in that area of the house. And as well, it's on top of a cabinet with a lot of devices. So it just kind of absorbs the dust. As you all probably know, nearly all of you watching my video, if you've got a big AV setup, big TV, lots of devices, it's just something that you're constantly dusting. And the inside of this PC is definitely a reflection of that. So I'd say probably it's a remove from the setup and dust internally at least once every six months to kind of keep on top of it. But maybe when we've got a radiator in the top of the case, uh, a lot of the dust will just land on top of that and, and sit there and not kind of float through as much. But obviously quite a lot of dust is being absorbed from the intakes as well. Just want to show you guys as well that the CPU temp uh, overall 86.5 degrees and then dropping now that the test is finishing. So when Cinebench was running the multi-core, we were up there 86 degrees and, and barely a whisper from the machine. So. Again, I'm just really impressed by that. And there is our lovely little score, 9,126. So now I'm gonna run up a single core performance test. Temperature's very much under control, obviously, when the single core test is running. So having a quick nose online, that score of around 9,100, give or take, is a very, very typical score for a stock speed 3600, so that's good. We are on the money there. I've not experienced any issues, any slowdown, any crashes or anything like that with this system, but it's always nice to just know that you're in the same ballpark as other people, just to know that everything is optimized for your system and there's not something strange going on somewhere that is lowering the performance of something somewhere along the line. And here is our single core score after 10 minutes, 1,191. So I'll record these scores. Cool. So we're done in here. I do realize there's a 2024 edition, but I don't have that at the moment. So that is fine. As you guys can see, I've made like a little hiding stack of the CPU boxes back there. I'm just very excited to pop the other one in, but we've got to get these numbers first to make it mean something. As much as these synthetic benchmarks can get it to mean something for us anyway. So what should we do, folks? I reckon we should go for the CPU run. So with this benchmark running, it immediately 
ramps up noticeably more than the previous benchmark, which is interesting. Our results are in. So here are the scores for all of the different tests, ranging from a single thread all the way up to max threads. So these numbers will reflect very differently going up the scale when we upgrade the CPU for obvious reasons. It's got double the amount of cores, so it will presumably, under max threads, be essentially about double the score, I would guess, but I'm not 100% sure. So that's gonna be interesting. I've recorded all these in spreadsheets. So what we'll do now is run, I think we should just run Time Spy, the overall benchmark for the PC, because even though this is gonna be pushing our GPU, we will still see if there's any overall benefit in this. We may as well while we have the app open. So now finally we're making the video card do some work and we get a nice spin up from the video card as well as a tiny bit of coil wine on this system. You don't really notice it day to day. It is very quiet in here at the moment, um, but it definitely is there. Here are the scores. So I think I'm gonna record both the overall time spy score and the CPU score in our spreadsheet. So that's it for 3D Mark. I think just for the sake of being complete, we may as well download Geekbench and run a Geekbench score. I've not done that at all on this system yet, but I am very familiar with Geekbench being a Mac user. So let's grab that quickly. I have never installed Geekbench on a Windows machine. So this is quite exciting. This is Geekbench 6. And then once we've run this, that really is truly a quite comprehensive suite of typical synthetic benchmarks. We're not doing any real world stuff because ultimately uh, games is all this machine does and we are gonna measure a very minute difference within games and my library is not at all modern. So I don't even have anything that can push my existing hardware, let alone a 12 core CPU. Um, I'm basically constantly playing catch up with games. So I am years behind everybody else. Okay, cool. So I'm liking this a lot. It's giving us all the detail, which is really nice. Uh, not as pretty as the Mac version though, is it? Let's just run the CPU benchmark. We won't bother with anything else. It's cool, you can do the GPU stuff in here, uh, but we'll just run this one CPU benchmark and then we can call, compare each score. Moment of truth is coming up and I'm actually quite excited because these numbers mean a little bit more to me than some of the other benchmarks. Okay, wow, so 1,670 in the single core, 7,272 in the multi-core score. Just nosing over at my M1 Mac Mini, single core 2,354 and multi-core 8,404. So uh, yeah, those uh, those M series chips are absolutely lovely, aren't they? It's just a basic M1 as well. That's a, that's a nice Geekbench score there. I'm expecting that multi-core score to rapidly increase after this upgrade. So obviously once we make this swap, we're not gonna be swapping back and forth, back and forth. So I wanna get everything done and I was just racking my brains now, is there anything else I wanna do before we pull this CPU out? And I think what would be pretty cool is even though it's not an apples to apples comparison because we're using two different coolers, it's still both the stock coolers that came with the CPU. So in that sense, it is an apples to apples comparison. So if we load up the system as much as possible, let's slam it out with Prime95 and Fermark just to get that temperature really roasting in the case. And then after a little while of that running, let's take a look at our absolute max temperature for the CPU package and see what it would be like versus the new one because I'm intrigued. This new one is gonna be a fair bit hotter in the same case. So let's start off with Prime95. Let's go for small FFTs for our maximum power heat CPU stress. There we go. Pop that over there, get that running. And then let's get Fermark running as well for the simple reason that we wanna heat up the system overall. We'll run the GPU stress test, go. Let's pull that down a little bit so that we can get hardware monitor up here. So after just launching this stuff, you can see that already the CPU temp, we're under CPU there, temperatures package is climbing right up to that critical 95. So 95 is where you don't wanna be. As you can see, it turns red. As soon as we get to 95, we are aiming a fair bit lower than that. Obviously this load is quite unrealistic. Uh, it would never reach this in games, but still, if you can run this stress test and your PC stays un way under 95, then you are good to go for any application. Um, so you can see that if we were to apply an overclock, for example, on this CPU right now and repeat this process, we would be in scary territory of crashing here or getting too hot at least. We would expect the new chip to perform the same as this with a stock cooler, or hopefully even better because the cooler is, is quite a bit bigger 
But then again, it's cooling a much more power hungry, much less efficient chip. I'm gonna let this sit here. We are sitting pretty much at 95.4. That is where we're sitting. I will record that. We'll run the same test again then post upgrade. This will probably be the first test we run as well, just to check stability once we first install the CPU. Um, but yeah, it's rock solid there at that 95.4. So 0.4 degrees over where we want to be at maximum. So definitely into scary territory. So obviously, even though this is advertised as a 65 watt TDP chip, you can see we are jumping and climbing as the CPU is finding headroom. We are climbing well above that. Um, up into the range of 90 watts for the package. So 90.12 watts there. We'll record that as well. It'll be interesting to see what the maximum is for the 3900X. I think we will take the package temperatures and the package power here, um, both of these max values. So yeah, that's stable at 95.4 and that is stable at 90.12 watts. Okay, after sitting here for quite some time, we have no change. Uh, but I will show you guys, even though this is not about the video card, I will show you guys quickly, because we're running Furmark as well, I'll just show you guys quickly what the video card is up to. So as you can see, the video card is not looking too bad at all. This is actually a really, really nice card, this 1660 Ti, and it's gonna be a sweet little PC that I, uh, that I build around this card after this machine is all done and dusted with the 5700 XT, or the 5700, sorry, uh, technically, but sort of 5700 XT. Okay, we are done. Let's put this machine out of its misery. So that is a decent suite of synthetic tests for the lovely Ryzen 5 3600. Now, nothing will come as a shock there, hopefully anyway, because I'm pretty sure we are operating well within spec, but nothing will come as a shock there. Uh, this is a very, very popular CPU and it is used by many, many gamers and just general PC users around the world. This one, on the other hand, is in less use. It is a less popular chip for the simple fact that it is not as good a value for all areas. Workstation, yes. Apps that can leverage that multi-core, multi-threaded workload stuff, yes. But general day-to-day -day stuff and general gaming, not so much. However, that's not the case for every single gaming application. Games have historically been getting better at recognising more CPU cores and taking advantage of them. But still, it's all about your video card for most titles. If you know that you have a CPU-intensive game, like maybe some simulation stuff or whatever, I'm not even entirely sure. Um, that could possibly run a fair bit better with a, with a processor like this. But anyway, let's rip into it and finally get it in the PC. Here we go. Let's have a look. There is our 3900X right there, complete with sticker. So this is a used CPU again, Brian, thank you so much. I paid about half of what this is worth gave me a lovely deal and he also threw in loads of extra goodies like seriously loads stuff that is going to really come in handy for future builds uh, he gave me a load of drives I also bought some RAM from him not RAM that will be going into this system but RAM that will be useful for other systems and then he also gave me a load of RAM as well so uh, there we go there's some paperwork and in here we have the cooler so cooler is in a separate box there we go, that's everything from that box. Let's take a look at this. Now, just like my Ryzen 5, the seller told me with that CPU he'd never used the stock cooler. Uh, Brian has never used this cooler. Whoa! Have you ever seen a stock cooler looking like that? <laughs> Check that out. So this is pretty much brand new. What he did say was we do just have a little bit of smudging on that thermal grease there. That is not a problem though. I'm just gonna whack that straight on, to be honest, guys. Um, if this was permanently staying in the system, then I would scrape that off and reapply, but we're gonna be running water cooling very, very soon, so that is fine. It's just smudged on the packaging there ever so slightly, but check that out. Look at that flipping thing. Wow. And by the looks of this, we'll confirm when we put it on, but uh, we, I guess, put the mounting hardware back on the board because we removed that for the smaller cooler. And this has RGB as well. So here's our fan cable. And then I'm guessing, yes, you would connect over here the RGB connector, I believe. I'm totally winging it here, folks. 
there's two different connector types there and I'm guessing that's what these other cables are for in the bottom of the package there. And then there's a switch on the side. I think that's a switch anyway. That does something. It's got the classic AMD lever design on it. That's really cool. I'm really excited about this cooler. I love a good stock cooler. Okay, let's pop that back for now so we don't smudge that any further. Put that back in there. That's gonna look pretty sick as well. My build has been slightly underwhelming because it's been half done for all this time. So having a little bit more RGB to play with will be quite nice. It'll look just a tiny bit cooler. And sadly, as the evening draws in, I am losing natural light and I have not yet wired up all of my video lights. So I'm gonna have to stop recording because I know I'm not gonna have enough light to properly show you guys. I mean, look at that, I've just thrown that there. I'm not gonna have enough light to show you guys the, uh, the internals of the PC. So yeah, I need to mount lights under this shelf and stuff before I can start filming properly here. I'm gonna have to pick this up when I've got a lot more light coming through there. Okay, I want this video to be nice for you guys. I don't want it all grainy and horrible and dark. So uh, we'll pick this up tomorrow. Gutted, gutted. I just wanna get it in and play with it. Oh man. We are back and most certainly equipped with some lovely daylight. I'm a little bit gutted though because I was setting up this uh, overhead camera little rig here for you guys to see the upgrade um, but I'm still waiting for the power supply for this camera in the post so that hasn't arrived but I'm not going to let that stop me do the CPU upgrade that camera will be handy in the future most definitely for videos like this should be really cool I've got the uh, HDMI link sorted for it so I just need the special little power supply for the, uh, the Canon camera and then we are sorted but I will keep it old school for this one and try and find you guys the best angle from the tripod. It's actually a really cool thing having the desk here because I've just got one gigantic, natural, huge video light right above me. Um, and it's not even that bright today. It's quite overcast, but it's still a lot of light coming into the room. The only thing is I do film quite a lot at night, so I'm gonna need to replicate it with lights as well, unfortunately, because I'm not always gonna be able to guarantee the daylight, but that'll have to come when I finish this setup. Oh, strange, I had a memory of these screws being captive. Okay, I must have imagined that, that's no problem. So, getting the side panel off. So first things first, we need to remove the little stock cooler for the Ryzen 5. As I said previously, I am very, very impressed with this little cooler. Love how quiet it is. Stock coolers have come on a long way. As I said in the build video for this PC, this is my first time seeing a lot of this newer gen stuff, um, just because it's been so long since I've actually had modern hardware. So some of it has been a real treat. A lot of stuff with the case has been a, a real big treat to see how far things have come. Um, this is obviously a nice modern platform. Not too much of a mess on this little cooler. We'll get all that cleaned up and of course get the CPU cleaned up. In fact, I'm gonna get a little cloth and do it while it's in the socket there. I have the most giant bottle of alcohol at the moment. I do have that little uh, CPU cleaning fluid somewhere, which is basically just alcohol anyway, but we will use this for now. What a beauty. In some ways, I'm actually quite sad to be taking this chip out because it's been so nice, but obviously, the new one is gonna be even nicer. Get this bad boy sitting comfortably back in here. There we go. We will see this again very soon in another build. So by the sounds of it, I've put the motherboard hardware in here. Yes, I have. And I'm pretty certain we need to put this back on, folks. Ooh. Okay, that wasn't good. Um, so it may look a bit darker now. One of my video lights just started making that sparking noise. You may have been able to hear it um, through the mic. It's got one of those little like lamp switches on the cable and it's been a little bit sparky for a while. I haven't really minded too much, uh, but based on that, I should probably change that switch. So yeah. Seems to be like video lighting is against me for this one, but that's because the whole place is in a state of flux, which is fine. Quite old school with my giant video hot boxes now. Anyway, uh, hot boxes, soft boxes. Oh my Lord. 
<laughs> oh man, okay, here we go. That's good enough. That's good enough. Yeah, uh, I was mid saying, I can't remember where I was now, but uh, I was mid saying, I'm not sure if we're going to be using the stock cooler or an aftermarket cooler on the build that includes this CPU. So we will just pop it back and wait and see. Lovely. So that was stock thermal paste on there as well from this build. We may be able to get a degree or so difference if we were to apply um, new thermal paste next time, if we are gonna use this stock cooler. So that'll be pretty cool to experiment with. Nice, so that is our boxed 3600 to go back on the shelf, ready for the next build. Okay, now it is time to move on to this guy. Here we go. First of all, we will put the CPU in the socket. And a quick inspection before we do, just to have a little look. Now this came from Brian. I know it's gonna be 100%, but I'm just gonna have a quick eyeball of this. Lovely, everything is looking perfect. It's also looking really nice and clean as well. So that is good. I just remembered um, Brian in the package gave me some alcohol wipes. So they're gonna be super handy as well for things like cleaning CPUs. It saves me pulling out this massive bottle and pouring out alcohol everywhere. Quick little look at her on camera before she goes in because once this is in, this will probably be staying in. Very much doubt that I'm gonna change the CPU. There we go, that's our little CPU in. Now then, are we gonna read the instructions, folks, or are we gonna wing this? I do know that these are going back on the board, though, because that's fairly obvious. We have the clips, the old school AMD style clips on that cooler, so these must go back on. My back plate has fallen off the back of the motherboard. <laughs> Didn't really think that one through. Can you tell it's been a couple of years since we built PCs? I am really enjoying getting back into it though. I'm looking forward to water cooling this system and I'm looking forward to building the next system as well. That other little system is gonna be a different vibe to this one. We'll, we'll make a little bit of variety with it somehow. There we go. Hey, that's what we want. I'm gonna need to hold this while I screw that in. Pop you on. Even though we don't have the overhead cam, which will be completely ideal because I'll be able to get a much closer, like completely above shot of this. Um, the desk is so big that I'm able to put my normal tripod on the desk and just point the camera down. So that is ideal. But you guys wait for the production value to leap up when I have the, uh, the overhead cam. Just you wait. We won't be able to contain ourselves with the excitement. Let's get the cooler. Oh man, we're gonna have to figure out this RGB as well, aren't we? That is a good point. What do we do with the RGB? We'll get it on the socket first and then we'll fiddle with that, I think. I think we'll still be able to have fairly easy access to the uh, connections. Okay, sweet. So yeah, this is lovely. We're gonna plonk this on the socket, hook the clips over the edge of the mounting hardware, and then we're gonna pull that lever down. As I said, the original thermal gloop is a little bit smushed off, but this is temporary anyway. Uh, we're gonna plonk it on, saves cleaning that off and wasting it. It's still there, it's still perfectly okay even if it is a bit smushed. So let's pop her on. Okay, that's both clips on. Now we're gonna pull the lever around. You guys can't see the lever from there probably, which is unfortunate. Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna actually make sure that we're completely straight because it kind of narks me when the cooler is off a little bit. <laughs> there we go. Oh man, that is always a hairy moment, always. I used to hate doing that on that system. Um, long time viewers of the channel remember that um, Athlon 3800 plus system and the warp in that motherboard, that red motherboard. Was it an MSI board, I think? Um, yeah, just cranking that lever used to be so painful. Last but not least, here's our CPU fan header. So with the exception of RGB, that is all plugged in. I very much like the mounting of that because it uses the stock AMD mounting clip hardware. Plonk it on, hook it on, turn the handle, job done. Also the previous cooler, absolutely lovely. Just whip the hardware off, turn the screws. Nice, 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 really lovely. So this cooler comes with two cables. We have a standard RGB cable and then we have a USB cable. So I presume the USB cable is if we want to purely software control this guy. Um, so we'll stick that back in the box. We will go with the RGB cable. That way we can just hook it into the case controller for now. Uh, you know, that'll be fine. I mean, I would like to get some software control over the RGB in this system. 
in the future, but obviously there's no point worrying about any of that now because we are going to be changing a lot of the components, at least the cooling components anyway. So, you know, things like fans and that will obviously be different. There'll be some LEDs in the water blocks, possibly in reservoirs. In fact, there are LEDs in the GPU water block as I balance my coffee directly above the system. Question now is where the heck did the connectors go? Ah, here we go. Two connectors on the side. I'm gonna try not to lose these little rubber pieces. I think if I was gonna install this cooler again, I would probably plug in the RGB cable before plonking it on the socket because this is quite hard to reach, although it would be easier to reach without a GPU in the case. Guess what, guys? For the importance of some pretty lights, the video card's coming out because I cannot reach that USB header. There we go. So let's just balance this on the CPU cooler. Then we can get this in. Lovely. Lovely, that is in. So now we can put our video card back. Don't jam anything. So I think it's wise for a moment just to leave the side panels off. We'll boot this guy up. We'll do a quick test of everything because we fiddled around with quite a lot of the cables. Um, but yeah, that's all good. That's connected. So the CPU is upgraded. Got our RGB connected via the USB 2.0 header. That means we'll be able to software control that uh, fan. But hopefully it'll just do some kind of default pattern. Now we are talking. Let's get the system up. So here is the system the correct way up. That's a nice looking cooler. Okay, power switch. Power switch is on. Now let's hit that power button and see what our machine does. Where's the power button? There's the power button. <laughs> Look at that. Cool, so we do have some glow from the cooler, the AMD cooler. That is so snazzy, isn't it? Obviously, you can take a while sometimes with a new CPU. That's absolutely fine. Come on, little machine, you can do it. Yeah, lovely. Look at that for angle, guys. Look at that. <laughs> okay, here we go, lovely. Haha, <laughs> 3.8 gigahertz. So our RAM is clocked back down. Yes. Okay, this looks like it's gonna be the first successful boot. A few oddities going on. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're in Windows. First thing I'm gonna do is have a little look at this CPU. Check that out. Wow, absolutely lovely. So she's running at about 3.8 gigahertz. Uh, yeah, that is exactly correct. First thing right away is I'm just gonna crunch the CPU. I'm just gonna go for it, see if we're stable. If we look at our idle temperature here, 3900X uh, package at 47.5 degrees C max. Okay, we will leave that there for a minute and let's load up a workload. Let's get this CPU really stressing. So basically I'm doing this, stress the CPU like mad um, just to see where we reach on temperatures. Wow, that system is way louder doing this test now, way louder, but it's a lot more powerful chip. So we should be, um, we should be seeing a fair bit more number crunching here. System is definitely loud, but I've got the side panels off. Let's have a quick look at power. Oh man, that is, look at that, oh gosh. 130.49 watts this uh, CPU is sucking. I'm gonna let this sit here and run, and I'm gonna let it all climb up. Look at those 24 threads there, guys, slammed out. Look at that. Let's really throw a curveball into the mix, get the GPU ramped up as well. This is more to just have a little look at the stability of my power supply. Okay, so that's the GPU ramping up as well now. And just with the GPU heating up, I'm just gonna keep an eye on these temperatures. Not that I have the side panel on, actually, so we're not getting a true representation of the system. That is a very good point. Let me get the side panel on. There we go, just moments after putting the side panel on, we've been able to increase that max temperature ever so slightly, 70.4, sticking at just about 70. Yeah, she's climbing a little bit now, which is good, because we're now containing the heat. What's that, guys, about a four degree difference with the side panel? I'm gonna put the other one on as well. Ah, okay. The other side panel is going to be a bit awkward to put on. I'll have to power down the system first before putting that on. We'll do that before the tests. I've just got to tidy up a couple of those smaller fan cables and that that are poking out the side. GPU is sucking about 132 watts and the CPU is sucking about 130 watts as well. This is about 260-ish watt load there. So there's still ample headroom 
I think this power supply is a 550, is it? So we should be absolutely fine with the final build. Should still be completely fine. Okay, we're gonna shut this down so that we can put the other side panel back on. It doesn't make that much difference to temperature, but we want it to be completely fair before we start benchmarking and whatnot. So let me just do that quickly. Okay, we are all set. Let's power it back on. And let's have a little look at the boot up process now that everything is set up. There we go, so we're back to our super quick boot. So I've let the system sit at the desktop for a while and we are looking at about 37-ish degrees, which is pretty good for an idle temp, I would say. It's probably about 19 degrees in this room and the system has quietened down a lot. With no load, the system is definitely um, nice and quiet. I'm gonna load up the system once again and I've got a couple of other things to be getting on with. So I will let it run for say quarter of an hour, 20 minutes, just so it really beds in. If there's gonna be any kind of crashing or any issues like that, I will see it in that time, hopefully. So we'll slam this again, I'll let it sit, and then we will come back and run some benchmarks. We have now stabilized and everything seems to be absolutely fine. So I am really quite chuffed with these temperatures. We're looking at maximum. This this is a fully slammed out 100%. Couldn't possibly slam the system any more load. Uh, we've got the GPU going as well, just to add some heat into the case there. 78.4 uh, degrees and that's 132.17 watts. So I've recorded this and we will look at it. I wish I'd recorded idle temperatures and power as well, to be honest, but never mind. That doesn't matter too much. So uh, this is our 3600. That was running toasty. That really was. Maybe I'd get a much better result on that if we reapplied the thermal grease on that one. Again, that was stock thermal grease I used on there. Um, but then that cooler had never been used. So I don't know, debatable. I don't know if this is typical or not. 78. 0.4, that's what we're recording now as temperature, 78.4. And then we're looking at 132.17 watts. This is a TDP of 105 watts. Yeah, a little bit more usage there. So I think we'll put this system out of its misery and also uh, put the electricity company at ease uh, because they're uh, counting their winnings at the moment with this going on. Absolutely lovely. Okay, I'm gonna wait for this to completely settle, wait for the temperatures to kind of normalize a little bit. Um, what's actually pretty crazy is this heat coming off this thing. This would not heat up with the previous CPU. It just wouldn't. But yeah, I can see the case, the side panel, the power supply, top of the case, back of the case, everything is feeling warm, so that's nice we will have a lot more work for our liquid cooling loop to do, especially if we do some overclocking on this CPU, which we of course will do. We will run these benchmarks, um, but obviously it's important to mention that this is not a completely scientific test. If we wanted to get a true comparison, we would need to do multiple benchmark runs in a much more controlled way, both before and after the CPU upgrade. So this is just giving us a rough idea. So we'll just take all the results with a pinch of salt. Now we're back to sort of normal CPU usage. That's ramped all the way down. And let me just get hardware monitor back up and running here so that I can have a little look at the CPU temperature. So we're still decreasing uh, bit by bit. We go 41.5, 41, 40.5. We are back idling nicely. So let's launch our first benchmark and give this a go. Here we go, start test. It's funny to see this now actually completing quicker. This render is is coming in a fair bit quicker on the screen. Okay, so results are in for the multi-core score. We are at 17,880. 9,126 on the 3600, that is nearly double. So obviously Cinebench can take advantage, the multi-core test can take advantage of all those threads, and it is nearly double. So let's do the single core test 
because this will definitely be an interesting one. Should be a lot closer to the 3600. Okay, nice. We have 1,326. So a little bit higher than our 3600 there on a single core, but much more in a similar kind of ballpark. Next up is 3D Mark. First thing we did last time was the CPU test. So we will do that again. Here are the results. That was successful. And check out the comparisons. So we're going from 3D Mark uh, CPU profiles to so the third one down. As you can see, um, obviously the very high thread counts are a lot better. And then as we go down the list, we're still seeing a gradual improvement, even down to just a single thread. So that echoes what we've seen in Cinebench. Um, it is pretty much in the ballpark for a single thread, but uh, just a slight bit quicker, which is actually really cool. So next up, we have our standard time spy test. So we'll check this one out. We'll record the CPU score and the general time spy score as well. With much more of a blend, we have got a closer score now. So time spy obviously relies heavily on the GPU. As you can see, the top one is the overall score, time spy score. 6501 versus 6851. So this is where we notice slightly less difference. On the CPU score, which is the one below, 7098 versus 11289. So on CPU stuff, you can see considerable improvement there, but still the overall test is not blazingly faster on this chip. So this is where we're talking about the difference in cost versus the difference in gaming performance. The tests that slam the CPU are all well and good. Yes, it is much quicker at heavy threaded workloads because it has more cores, more threads. That is completely obvious. But then when you get down into the nitty gritty, she is not so blazing fast, far beyond the 3600 anyway in gaming. But this system is still gonna be rocking 220 plus FPS on 1080p ultra settings on Fortnite, according to that. <laughs> Amazing, we don't even need to test any games. Geekbench is the last one. Just like the previous test, the only thing we're focusing on with Geekbench is the CPU score. I do apologize for the lighting, folks. I will get it sorted, I promise. So this test is running now, this is our last test, and then we can crunch a little bit of these numbers in the spreadsheet and take a look at what we've got. Here are our Geekbench scores. I've popped them in, so we've got the last two rows here. As you can see, again, a little bit of improvement on the single core. Multi-core though, it's not completely double this time, so it's interesting. Geekbench is a different beast entirely to, say, Cinebench, that gives us a dramatically different multi-core score there. Um, so it just goes to show how kind of <laughs> utterly pointless these benchmarks are really, unless you run a lot of them and just keep comparing. So we've created our own kind of arbitrary numbers here by totaling these columns. So obviously these two numbers mean absolutely nothing apart from a direct comparison between all these numbers on this CPU and all these numbers on that CPU. So overall, from all the tests we have run, this is the difference in score. We've just added them together. 51,217 versus 75,592. So there we have it. Upgrade complete. And we have got a 47.6% increase across all of those benchmarks that we ran. Now, that is, of course, not an indication of the real world performance that you would get. We are probably looking at overall taking a broad range of tasks into consideration, maybe about a 10, 15% increase going from the Ryzen 5 3600 to the Ryzen 9 3900X. I tell you what though guys, we have unlocked quite a bit more fun with this system now because we can slam quite a hefty overclock on this guy and it'll really push our cooling when we finally do the custom loop. So I'm really looking forward to that. And also we've got a little bit more power under the hood now. So I'm even more excited to swap the GPU and see what this can do. Now I'm gonna add the GPU into this spreadsheet so that we can keep this data. And then we can compare the 3900X with the 1660 Ti to the 3900X with the What's that card called? RX 5700 XT, sort of XT. Another huge benefit is, of course, we have freed up the 3600 for our separate build. So we can put another build together very soon. I have motherboard, CPU, GPU, and RAM, and storage sorted for that system. So all we need is a case and power supply. And I've got my eye on a case and power supply little deal that I think will be good. But enough of all of this stuff. We have just been running benchmark after benchmark after benchmark benchmark after benchmark can it game yes yeah, so far so good i mean even in a wide open area 
Um, not much slowdown. Yeah, beautiful performance. Absolutely beautiful performance. I cannot complain whatsoever. Just look at the speed. Look at the speed. Should have put it on nightmare difficulty. I think this machine can handle it. Someone vacuuming their car outside is, uh, is louder than my PC, so it's clearly working well. Who shot me? Hey. Yeah, I cannot complain. It is buttery smooth, man. <laughs> okay, so all jokes aside, uh, it's a lovely little upgrade. Brian, thank you so much. Not only have you allowed this lovely, fun little video to happen today, but I've now got a bonus faster system and it'll be a lot more fun to play with overclocking and getting all that heat going in the loop. Plus the fact, We've got a load of other parts to play with. So Brian sent over quite a lot of drives. There were some SSDs, some storage drives, loads of RAM for me to add to my random RAM collection. So that'll be really handy for when we get systems in, especially notebooks. If you need to swap a little bit of memory here and there, I've got generally a better stock of that now. So Brian, huge thank you. It was a lovely, lovely deal on this CPU. Freeing up that 3600, it couldn't have gone any better. So thank you all for watching. I'm hopefully gonna get some of these workbench things finished soon so the videos will be a little bit more polished, a little bit better lighting. I'll know where I am. I'll get that overhead camera view working as well. So that'll be really cool. Um, yeah, but as you can probably tell, it's already much, much better and a way more productive environment to do this stuff in. So seems to be going well, seems to be going well. Thank you all so much for the support as always, and I'll see you in the next video.